Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Right. Yeah, I'll go through whatever you said. How's everyone out there on this beautiful Tuesday? Thanks for joining us. Today we're going to speak about the importance of imagery. Not some mystical scientific deal that nobody understands, but the image you have of yourself. That's the biggest and most important area to find good health. You recognize that most of us have haphazard ideology. We almost pasted ourselves together from a whole series of misinformation that you were given from the time you were a child. As an example, when you get old, your brain doesn't work. You become decrepit. You can't move. Your sexuality goes away. This is inbreded into us almost genetically so that our minds believe it. When you have family members that all tend to get sick at a particular age, that's another way that you determine what's going to happen to you. Now, we have to work really hard against the tide of negativity that governs societies worldwide today. And you almost have to be an enigma in your own mind and be constantly willing and ready to explore new areas and endeavors of thought and go to the outer edges of what your potential and possibility is. I'll tell a great story. Going back about 35 years ago, we had a woman come to us. We were still in Boston at that point, to Hippocrates. She weighed 450 pounds. And she had to be one of the funniest people I ever met in my life. Uh, when she would come into the room, she'd have us all laughing within 30 seconds. And I became very fond of her. And really hoped that she was doing well. She was living here in the state of Florida at that point, and I was speaking in Orlando on a Thursday night and driving to Miami to speak on Friday night. I said, okay, I'll stop to see Nancy for 10 minutes uh, to see how she's doing. So I went to the door, knocked on it, and this very attractive blonde woman comes out, and I said, where's your mom? Is, is Nancy here? And she went back in as Nancy would have done and came back and she said, I'm Nancy. And I almost dropped dead right in front of her house here. She was gonna to have to revive me, bring in 911. And it was Nancy. And she had actually lost over 300 pounds. And when I got into the house, uh, I was on a very tight schedule. I started to notice something that was very eerie. It scared the heck out of me, to be honest with you. Uh, she had Pictures that she obviously clipped out of Shape magazine, Cosmopolitan magazine, these beautiful women's bodies. And then she had a picture of herself cut out, and that's the head she put on. And the only time I'd ever seen anything like that before was in murder mystery movies. So you can imagine I kept moving backwards towards the door and kept saying to her more often, you know, I've got to go. I've got a, a several hour drive down to Miami. I don't want to be late. And I finally got brave enough to say to her, you know, I see about 30 of these on. And I said, how do you ever think of doing that? She said, you told me to do it. And I still didn't immediately catch what she was saying, but she was correct. I said to, to everyone one time in class that you've got to create an image of who you want to be and get it to be so clear, so vital, so real, uh, unpermitting, just completely indulge, go 100% in this, that you'll do anything it takes to create that shape, to create that body, to create that vitality. And she did it. And she created the reality that great people like Dr. Symington and one of my colleagues who runs the Comprehensive Cancer Program here, uh, his partner, Dr. Ranicki, had been teaching people about reversing disease. So in our weight loss academy here, what we're speaking about is something we do. We help you create your own reality through imagery that you are uncompromising in reaching that. Whatever it is that you desire, be it complete health, be it happiness, be it great partnerships, relationships, a job that you love, whatever it may be, you've got to create that reality. And once you do it and just don't stop moving in the right direction. Progress until you have achieved it. It becomes ever increasingly easier for you to do this in other areas of your life. Once you know that you're in command, that you're in control, and nobody else 
can throw you off that pattern, then there's nothing you can't do. So that's our message for today. We're going to be back next Tuesday, too. And we have questions coming in from all over the world. By the way, I better say this. I'll be bad if I don't. Uh, Friday, I'll be speaking in Oslo. On Sunday, I'll be speaking in Stockholm. And then on to Frankfurt, on to Berlin, on to Geneva, Switzerland, then on to Britain. So we look forward to all of our friends that are out there. We're going to be reaching your neighborhood soon. We're going to be in Northern California and Southern California lecture tour in November. We're going to be in Maryland, Connecticut, New Jersey, of all places, and Pennsylvania in late October. We're going to be in, I think, on the 10th, 9th and 10th in the large Whole Life Expo show in Toronto, Canada. So we'll be somewhere in your neighborhood. So bring yourself, your friends out. Uh, be well. So here are the first questions that I have. I don't see to be losing weight after going vegan. Well, there's different levels of vegan. The vegan diet that I first got on, I was surprised I lost weight uh, because it was white bread with mustard on it with pretzels. Not a great vegan diet. <laughs> so eating more and more green food, raw food, and avoiding the sugary foods, even the notable fruits can put pounds on you, that's for sure. Uh, sugar is sugar. I know that uh, a lot of the quasi-experts who don't know what they're talking about are going to tell you there's a difference between fruit sugar and other forms. That's not true. The body says, hey, this makes me fat, so I'm going to get fat from it. Eating cooked carbohydrates, breads, pastas, potatoes, another sure way to create sugar in the body. So avoiding those. Exercise is paramount. I mean, one of the things that I didn't understand, I lost all of this weight. I had flabby, you know, ripples in my back and everything. So I didn't exercise during that early day process nearly half a century ago. Uh, then it took me years of exercising to get rid of a lot of those effects. 82% uh, of muscle comes from fat. So when a person is basically trying to lose weight, lifting weight is the number one antidote to removing weight even more so than aerobic. Now, of course, you need aerobic to circulate all the waste out of the body to get the lymphatic system going, activate the immune system. But number one, I can take a chubby person and in six months make their bodies look like hard bodies. Or a very skinny person, it may take up to three years to do the same. We have to gain a little bit of weight and break it into muscles. So here we go. Initially, but now I weigh more. Wow. You must be eating a lot of my kind of vegan diet out there. Now, just get on the diet here at Hippocrates. Uh, in, during the Weight Loss Academy program, the average weight loss is about 25 pounds. Uh, we have some that do 50, some that do a little less, but that's a common thing. We anticipate and we expect that. Thanks for writing in about that because it's a powerfully important question everyone is asking out there. And don't feel bad about your weight. Go back to that imagery again I spoke about. If my buddy Nancy could lose 300 pounds, I'm sure that you don't endure the same level of weight and you can lose your weight. We're here for you. Just remember that. Next question. So here's the study we did in Boston. You know, one of the odd things is uh, everyone, including Hippocrates, was advocating massive amounts of fruit. It was fun food. Uh, of course, that was 60% of my raw food diet was sugar. Uh, why? Because I was still a sugar addict. I was just using organic, more expensive varieties of sugar at that point. Uh, we then started to notice that women with visible breast cancer, when they would eat lots of fruit or drink even large amounts of beet and carrot juice, fructose-rich uh, vegetables, that the tumor would actually grow. And inverse, when they eliminated those, we did a little testing, not studies, uh, we actually saw it reduce in almost every case. Uh, we then went on a several-year mission to try to figure out why this was happening and to no avail. Uh, in the medical literature, in, even today, they're still saying fruits and vegetables, fruits and vegetables. Uh, when I finally stumbled upon agricultural science, I was stunned to find out that uh, starting with the Chinese, we started to hybrid fruit to have more sugar in it thousands of years ago. And today it's become an art form and a science that's just unbelievable. Uh, they recognized a long time ago in the markets that the guy who had the sweetest fruit sold the most and consistently people went back. So it was a marketing ploy. And that is so. The other thing I may say to you is that MIT, uh, we had volunteers, uh, some of the scientists 
at MIT Tufts University when we were still located in Boston. Uh, we'd go in at night and sometimes use the laboratories. I assisted them. I wasn't the science guy in that situation. And we found out that even after you gain complete health, uh, meaning that you don't have viruses or bacteria or mold or yeast or fungus or cancer problems, and we're really sure uh, our doctors and, and, and uh, medical team here review your test and say, yeah, she or he's been stable now for many months, no more than 15% of your diet can be or should be fruit. So if you eat 10 pounds of food, uh, one and a half pounds can be fruit. The other caveat to this, it's pretty scary, is to find ripe organic fruit is almost impossible. Uh, no fruit is picked ripe. Uh, they cannot do it. Uh, they have to ship it on planes and trains and trucks around the world, and a ripe fruit may have a several day shelf life, where if they pick the fruit a month, two months, three months, as in the case of oranges, up to six months early and make juice out of it, et cetera. Uh, some of the bigger companies actually paint the green oranges orange. Uh, they can now have it far less perishable. It will last months under those circumstances. So what we now know is that all unripened fruit create high acidity in the body and erode the bone tissue, the teeth. So when you've seen ads on TV about dentists saying even healthy food like fruit, eat the enamel off, it's unripened fruit that does that. And once again, almost 100% of fruit is unripened. So you have the two problems, a very high sugar content, uh, which feeds all these diseases and fat. And the second problem is the unripeness of fruit. So having your own fruit tree or knowing where that is and letting it fall to the ground and letting it be organic would be the option. So now vegan foods to gain weight. Uh, what most of you don't realize with all of the nonsense and propaganda that goes on with this program and that program is that carbohydrates are what put weight on your body. Proteins do not put weight on your body. So we'll explain this to you in a minute. You could eat two pounds of protein powder a day. If you don't lift weight, it doesn't put an ounce on you. But carbohydrates, on the other hand, simple sugars do so. So when we have thin people here and we're trying to gain body mass, we have them lift weight in 100% of cases because healthy weight is muscle. Healthy weight is not fat. Every ounce of fat in your body contributes to heart, heart disease and diabetes and even cancer. So we want muscle. Then we start to put them on things like millet and quinoa and teff and amaranth and buckwheat and beans, now, all of these are sprouted first, making them far more digestible. And then at that point, most of this is eaten raw. But if some of you out there are still eating cooked food, that's perfectly fine. Sprout them first, usable, and don't overcook them. Although once you cook them, the benefits are pretty much gone, but the minerals stay intact. And how you would do that is you, after sprouting grains, you just boil water, let it sit for five minutes, but double the water to half the amount of grains, put a top on and let it sit for 10 minutes. It's done. With beans, it's a little more. Uh, let, let it boil, uh, wait for two minutes, put the beans in, put it on low for about 15 minutes on the stove with the lid on, and then your beans are gonna be done. Always sprout it first, making it digestible, usable by the body. Uh, makes the roughage uh, much more helpful to the body for uh, elimination, and digestion. So that's the kind of food that we'd want you to have. Sweet potatoes, yams, uh, things of this nature in their raw state, ideally, but if not even cooked, help to put weight on. But you don't want weight without muscle. Convert that, as we said early on uh, today, that fat into muscle. The other thing I am often asked when I travel the globe is, what is the most important thing to do when it comes to my body or that it stays intact? Uh, what we know is the basics about food. The more raw food you eat, the better it is. The more sprouts that are in there, the better it is. Uh, taking supplemental algaes, uh, taking you know, whole food supplementation. If you read my book, Supplements Exposed, it truly explains why most supplements are dangerous to take on the market. But then equally important is doing aerobic exercise, a minimum of 35 minutes, five days a week, 
stretching, hopefully seven days a week, abdominal exercise, seven days a week to keep the belly flat, and then ultimately weightlifting for a minimum of an hour and a half, three days a week. So the next question is about bone density, how to help a bone density problem. Uh, most of you have been lied to by the supplement industry, the health industry, saying calcium is a big problem. Uh, I've been looking at thousands and thousands of highly sophisticated uh, nutritional analysis and realize that very, very few women lack calcium. Uh, now, there's many reasons you want calcium, not just bone density. Uh, if you're looking at nutrients, uh, silica, and also biotin, a protein, and strontium are three nutrients that help, even if you have good bones, make them even stronger. But without weightlifting, your bones will never be strong. Uh, I'll give you an example. First, I saw this in practice. I knew it scientifically, but I didn't know it in practice. We had a 93-year-old woman here who was actually a child prodigy early on, and it was a concert pianist. And when we tested her bone density, it was 50% there. We were literally worried she would sneeze and collapse on the ground. And that's not an embellishment. That could have happened. And we said, you have to exercise. And it was like I cursed at her at the top of my lung. She was appalled. As women of her ilk and her generation, exercise was something that men did who were uncouth, not women. And finally, she indignantly came back and about an hour and a half later and said, okay, I'll do it if it's going to help. And we watched what happened. Uh, she stayed with us an additional two weeks, a total of five weeks. We had her exercising with our exercise physiologist. We have a whole team of experts here. Uh, now, we only had one at that point. And her bone density increased in five weeks at 93 years old by 21.5%. I said, this is a done deal. So you've got to make your bones strong. It's a pretty simple principle. I condense the bones by putting pressure on them. Gravity works on that. Then the structure of the cell, all cells are the same pretty much. Some make soft tissue, some make hard tissue. It presses it together so you don't have that gap. If you don't have that gap, the elasticity or the flexibility or the opening in the bone, the bone density is, is not bad. It sticks together like this. And the more you press them together, the stronger your bone density. So I look forward to see those of you out there around the world in the countries I've mentioned early on. Next week, we're going to have one of our family, one of our team members here to bring you up to speed on another subject that is commonplace here in the Hippocrates Life Transformation Program, Weight Loss Program, Comprehensive Cancer Program, Diabetic Program, and most important, make your life happy. Create the image of who you want to be and do it. Okay. Awesome. Good job. <laughs> Thanks. All right.